Hallo. Sometimes there are people in your life that are telling you that you're not important or that you don't matter. So I want to make sure that the 3D cursor is at the origin of the world. When I add a curve, tap into edit mode, delete the vertices, I now have access to all these new tools and I'm going to use this draw tool to draw a curve wherever my 3D cursor is. Now in the top view I'm going to draw a shape that kind of looks something like this. If you're asking me why I don't generate this in geometry nodes, I'd say, why would I? It, it takes a couple of seconds and, you know, why bother? Let's get some geometry nodes going here. Let's hit new. First of all, I don't like that the points are unevenly distributed here, so I'm going to resample the curve. Let's go and increase this to like 0.5 meters, and now all the points should be evenly distributed. Also, I don't want it to stay flat, so let's get a curve to mesh node. As the profile curve, we're just going to look for a line and make sure we choose the curve line and not the mesh line. And for some reason, uh, the, the vertical axis is not the Z on this one, but uh, a Y axis. So let's do something like this. Uh, this looks okay. I will now add two new windows to show you a couple of things. First of all, I'm going to create a UV grid for testing purposes. And I'm also going to go into the shader editor. Let's not forget to like add a new material here and use a set material node to actually assign it here. I'm also going to go in some rendered view and drop in this new generated grid. Let's take a look. A UV map is just a coordinate system, right? And we're just looking at pixel and assigning it to a point on our model. And these are just long squiggly planes. So it's so easy to unwrap them that we can even do it in geometry nodes. And I will show you how. First of all, we need a group output. Let's go into this group tab and hit output plus let's change it to vector and call it UV. I'm going to call everything UV that makes it a little bit simpler to remember, right? We're going to outputs, also going to call it UV. And here under input attribute, I can also type in UV. And now when I connect this vector here, whatever I put in here should affect this thing. We're going to take advantage of a node called curve parameter. No, spline parameter. And this spline parameter returns a value from either 0 to 1 or 0 to a certain length, depending on the curve length. Now we can plug it in right away because, well, it's, it's a value and not a vector. And we also have two curves. We have the curves that come out of this input and we have the curve that comes out of this curve line. So which one are they going to reference? Well, none of them because at this point they are actually not a curve anymore, but a mesh since we've converted it. So you've already guessed that we have to use a capture attribute node to tell Blender at which point we try to look at this uh, factor value. So let's hit it with a factor. Now we've captured uh, this uh, value, this length of the big curve. And now we're going to duplicate this capture attribute and put it here and also connect it to the factor. And this now returns uh, the value of the height of this uh, fancy model. We are going to feed it uh, into this UV value. So first of all, because I don't want the lines to go all over the place, I'm going to create a new input and call it named attribute. Um, you guessed it, I'll also call it UV, just for simpleness sake, and change it to vector. And now we can use a store named attribute connected here. And whatever we put in here and call UV, like this, is now going to be referenced here. So, well, it's like a, an invisible link between these two nodes. And let's actually combine XYZ. And into the x-axis goes the first attribute, like this. And into the y-axis goes the second attribute, like this. And as you can see now, we have something that actually resembles a UV map. There's another thing that we can use, which is this length value. And you might say, wow, this is much better. This is not even stretched out. Why would you use the factor output? I can tell you now, for example, that this point is probably 0, 0. And that this point at the opposite corner even though it's far away, it's probably going to be 1-1. One, one. Maybe it's like swapped around or something, but like in theory, I can very specifically address these corner points. However, if I use the length value now, um, this point could be anything, depending on how long these two curves are. I do know that for another purpose later on, I will also need the length of the long curve here. So I'm going to duplicate this capture attribute and also put in the length. So we've done it already. I will displace this thing on the z-axis. And as always, when you displace something, we're going to use the set position node. And as always, when we just want random displacement, we're going to use the boring old noise texture. And as always, when we displace something with noise texture, we're going to use two vector math nodes, one set to subtract, subtracting 0.5 from the color output, and a second one where we're going to feed it into a multiply. Yes, I know it's boring repetition, but for everyone new here, 
The multiply now is the strength of this displacement and the subtract node is meant to prevent this. So I'm going to set these factors to zero. I only want to displace it on the z-axis and I'm going to scale it down to something like this. The last thing that we want to do, I want to make it wavy and these waves should always point away outwards away from the normal. Since we want to take a look at the normal, why not add in a normal node? I'm just going to put it directly into offset. Let's also get a vector math node, plug it into here, set it to multiply uh, and that way we can control the strength. And as you can see, indeed, it kind of moves outwards and inwards. It looks a little bit crazy because of the displacement. Let me quickly hide it so, you, so I can prove to you that it's actually looking rather normal like this. Now I do have this other value that we haven't used yet, which is the length and I'm going to plug it in to here. We're going to use a math node, I know, more nodes and set it to cosine. And this cosine can turn like a continuous rising value into like a cool wobbly value. So I'm going to multiply it by a big number. Something like, yeah, let's try this perhaps. It's a little bit difficult to see, so let's get another multiply node. This time I'm going to set it behind this cosine value. Uh, at which point it should control the strength. And as you can see, uh, proof and concept, we actually did wobble this thing. So let's get another math node here and this time set it to add. And now if I add a value, you can see that it starts to move. And let's use a time, scene time node, plug in seconds, which is going to be way too fast for now, but we can use yet another math node. I know it's getting boring. and use the multiply factor to like make it go faster or in this case let's try 0.1. Now I'm going to unmute. I actually use the key M by the way. That's it for geometry nodes. Now we have to work on the material. So through the magic of video editing I've played a little bit around and I have added this wonderful HDRI here which you can download by following the link in the description where I put like a link to a free Patreon page where you can download it and you don't even need to pay for it or something, right? I'm just that kind of guy, you know? So let's take a look at it now in, in like a rendered viewport mode. Now, obviously it has gotten quite dark, um, but don't worry, we're not going to use the principal shader. We're going to use an emission shader. Let's plug it right in there. Um, I'm going to use a hue saturation value node like this, and I'm going to plug it into the emission. And, and next up, I'm going to give it a little variation by playing around with these values. And now I have two different greens that both look like I like them. And later on we can randomize them by influencing this factor input. If you are working in Eevee, you should make sure that your material here has the blend mode set to alpha blend in the settings of the material. Next up, we're going to use a mix shader. And in the top input, I'm going to plug in the transparent BSTF. Now let's take a look at this UV value and take a look at the x, y, z coordinates. And let's use the x as the mix factor for now, color ramp. And now let's add another handle here, make it also black because black means transparent, at least if the transparent one is at the top shader. And now you can see it fades out on both ends. I believe it could be a little bit more contrasty because it doesn't need such a big fade out. So I'm just going to do this Let's actually also set this to ease so it's a little bit more smooth and put this one into Y. I want to like lower this top value so it like fades out a little bit more at the top. And you know what, let's actually do it, make it like a little bit, you know, I want to create this kind of lid at the underside here. This is a little bit too exaggerated, but now you can see what I mean. Uh, this is maybe fine. I don't like how sudden it stops. So let's put in a math note and set it to power. And now I should be able to make this fall off a little bit more smooth. In order to like combine both transparencies together, I'm going to use multiply. Um, another thing that we don't want is this. Can you see this like hard edge here? Let's get in a layer weight node. And it kind of looks different, but it is doing the exact opposite. Now the things that are flat are getting faded out, but the edges are still uh, visible. So let's invert it by using Yet another math node and I'm going to subtract this value that we've just created from the value one. It's still not looking that nice so let's uh, raise up this value 0.9 perhaps and now as you can see we no longer have these harsh edges that appear everywhere. Harsh edges, no harsh edges. 
However, we want to have a noise texture. This one also gets the UV and I'm already going to put in a vector math node here because I know we're going to need it. Set it to multiply. I'm going to type in one into all three channels and connect it into, you guessed it, yet another multiply. We're just adding like layers of transparency on top of each other. Color ramp and math nodes are like 90% <laughs> of like everything in Blender I do. And as you can see, like, okay, it kind of starts to work. Now let's crank up this value until we get like more vertical streaks. Uh, we lower the scale a little bit. That's good. We raise the detail a little bit. So we get like a, a few more of these vertical streaks. Maybe a little bit of roughness. No, not too much, I guess. Play a little bit around with this color and value. Now let's hit play and see how it works in combination with like our wobbling. And that is like a very elegant and smooth animation here. I'm going to show it to you again in viewport shading so you can get like a feeling for like the speed and size of the waves and everything that I have here. Um, just so you can copy it if you want to have like a similar result. Last but not least, let's duplicate this noise texture. Let's also plug it into the UV. Let's make it a little bit bigger again. Plug in this factor into this factor from the hue saturation value from, from the beginning, you know, that's a callback. Let's maybe increase this contrast a little bit so we can see it better. And now setting this to 4D allows me using this W slider to kind of animate the color. Let's type in hash frame divided by something high, 700 perhaps. And now it should be animated as well. And as you can see, it's kind of uh, going around. Now let's uh, lower the contrast again a little bit so it's not that obvious. You maybe have to raise like the power of your emission. So it's a little bit more like, wow, the power of the sun and something. And let's quickly talk about the scene. Another thing that I added is this, which I called a sky mist, which is just a very boring um, noise texture on a plane that is mixing between like an emission and a transparency shader, uh, just to give it like a couple of little color spots. We have a big plane, which is set reflective to simulate water. We have two end landscapes. On one of these end landscapes is just a 2D vector image of a guy. And we have a couple of bushes in the foreground and I have created some very shitty stones here. And those are all the elements, just some, just all combined together. You can get a pretty nice result pretty easily. That was like, what, uh, 10 minutes of work altogether? Uh, I think it's pretty nice.